in the first brain, one thing to keep in mind, you have a left side of the brain and the right side. The left is very logical, very organized, very detailed, very analytical. The right is actually very creative. It's very intuitive. It's very much in the big picture where the left is like very detailed. So do you have a dominant part of your nervous system and part of your brain? Is one side kind of more on than the other? And as much as you can kind of start to get to know about yourself, which energy, vata, pitta, kapha, what side of the brain, left versus right, which part of the brain is most active? Is it your first brain, your second, or your third brain, which is something that's a little bit more advanced? This is how you can d- dig in words. And I think of what Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. I really believe we're here to examine ourselves, examine our lives and get to our own truth. And then when we do that, we can really feel blissful and feel happy. So one structure that you should know about the amygdala, these are tiny little like almond shaped little um, areas of the brain. What's interesting about the amygdala, the amygdala, the two of them, they evaluate if something is threatening outside of your conscious awareness. So let's say you walk into a room and you're like, I, I feel this gut like intuition of something and I'm not sure even what it is. Your brain, your amygdala actually picks it up before you're even consciously aware. So it might be picking up on something that you haven't even noticed at the first brain level, which I think is fascinating because they did an exercise and they, how about this? Fearful faces were perceived much more rapidly than happy or neutral ones. And these are picked up by the amygdala. So for example, if you're in a grocery store and you're checking out in line, and if you could just even smile and just spend some time smiling, you know, I know we have our masks on and everything, but you can see it in the eyes, say a few words of kindness to the person that's at the checkout, you know, checking you out. Imagine the energy exchange and how that person's amygdala can feel more relaxed and how that person's reptilian brain can come down because they're hurry, 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 seeing the long line, feeling that they have to move fast. So by this is an exercise that actually I often recommend. It's called the smiling face exercise is start smiling more, start showing yourself as a positive energy individual, because what happens is you influence others. And then what happens is what they do is they smile back at you. Your amygdala can quiet down too. And it sounds very simple, but starting to plug in some of these things to reduce your reptilian brain and to quiet it down will really help your prefrontal brain release negative thought patterns. So one of the experiments is just to try to like smile, even in the car, when I'm driving, I'll just smile. And it's fascinating how I've even smiled and the person next to me and the other car will smile back. You know, it creates a nice energy for yourself and for the person around you because your amygdala is picking up on this at a very, very early stage. And so what happens is we see something, it's the alarm stage. That's where the amygdala and the anterior start saying that pick up. The hippocampus is the memory of like, oh my goodness, last time I was on a roller coaster, I was really scared. So maybe that throws into my alarm phase of that ride and gets me to look at that lady more than looking at the fun, loving kid. I have a belief. My prefrontal cortex is like, oh my gosh, the the roller coaster is scary. And then I have an unconscious reaction that happens actually at your amygdala level. And then I have a coping. So what you want to do now, this is going to be the exercise time, is you're going to start thinking about your beliefs. What is your, think about what triggers you, maybe what situations, what people, is there a scenario that is your repetitive scenario that triggers you? And we're going to do an exercise to shift out of that. If you have a negative thought, you're supposed to actually think five positive thoughts to overcome a negative. I don't know about you, but I don't do that very often. And that's an important thing to do, not only for yourself, but for others, because it takes five thoughts to quiet down the reptilian brain when one negative thought enters. How about that? Okay. So I love this line by Louise Hay, the path to healing is not about learning something new, but unlearning the belief patterns that make you sick. And I was reading Louise Hay back, gosh, 20 years ago. And I remember when I first had read some of her books and I'm a big fan and God, God bless her soul, she's passed. Um, really that idea of shifting the thinking, shifting the, your programming 